number one thing I gleaned is that they're not trading out a number one. That's, you know, I know there had been some idea that maybe if there were two guys they were really in love with, that maybe they would move off of that pick um, and try to garner some more draft capital. I think it's pretty clear from what we learned from Ryan Poles today that they're going to be the first team off the board, as they should be with the number one overall pick next month. But a lot of talk about Caleb Williams uh, kind of closing the chapter on the Justin Fields trade because this is the first time that we had heard from Ryan Poles um, you know, since that whole thing went down, since free agency started. So a lot of, a lot of talking points, but the quarterbacks still, even with uh, the field stuff in the rearview mirror, were you know big focal point of this morning. In terms of the Justin Fields chapter being closed, he dispelled a lot of, yeah, we weren't even putting him out there. Yes, they had had trade talks, all that stuff done. Has he also basically said to you, it's Caleb Williams, we're done here? He hasn't said that verbatim, and I don't expect Ryan Poles to, but... um... I mean, everything is centered on Caleb Williams, the entire conversation, and and not to read too much into this. So he's going from here straight to LSU's Pro Day. He will not be at UNC's Pro Day. They will have other people there. But if you're reading the tea leaves here, Cap, and seeing where all the resources have been spent and the amount of time that's already been, been dedicated to getting to know Caleb Williams, how does he take criticism? How is he with his teammates? How is he, you know, what are the examples of his leadership? There's already so much there that would lead you to believe that that is the apple of their eye, so to speak, and the person that they are focusing on solely with that number one overall pick. Courtney Cronin with us here as we talk about the Chicago Bears on ESPN 1000 and streaming on the ESPN Chicago app. Courtney, earlier we were talking about Keenan Allen uh, and DJ Moore, who's going to be taken care of first. We feel like both quarter, uh, both wide receivers will get paid. Probably Keenan Allen first will be taken care of with a longer deal. Do you anticipate that? See, I thought it was, Paul's answer was interesting when I asked him about a contract extension because if we're being realistic about this, they did not trade a fourth-round pick this year, their own fourth-round pick, to have Keenan Allen here as a short-term rental. It's not like they're a Super Bowl team this year, but they're getting closer to being a team that can be in contention of the playoff picture. So – Keenan Allen should finish out his career in Chicago. He's 32 years old, but he's going into the final year of his deal. And I thought Cole's answer about how he felt like down the line, yes, that's something that's going to happen. He wants him here long term, but that he tries to be intentional with the way, like the timing of some of these deals. And of course, you go back in your mind to last October, last November. Montez Sweat had not played a down of football, but he got that contract extension done within five days. And there, there are reasons for that. Um, certainly they, you know, they had to get it done before he played a snap of football and make sure that they were able to lock him up so he didn't hit free agency. But that also, they didn't do J- Jalen Johnson until the offseason. So the timing of these things do matter I, I, in terms of if there's a pattern they can follow because DJ Moore is up. Into after the 2025 season, so he's still got time. I would imagine, though, it's not going to be a, well, you have to come prove something in Chicago first and foremost. Keenan Allen's already proven himself. He's, you know, the health thing, even though he's been, you know, missed four games this year and has missed about 11 or 10 the last two seasons, you know, the health has still got to be a, what they factor into a potential deal for him and what that could look like because, He's 32 years old. DJ Moore is 26. Very different in terms of the wide receiver contracts and what they would, how they would look, A, the years and the terms and everything else. But I imagine that this offseason something will get done with Keenan Allen and it's not going to be, hey, prove it this year on the field before we give you another deal. In terms of you said there's a couple of guys that he is locked in on at pick number nine. I believe one of those is Malik Neighbors. Who do you believe the other one is? Depends. I mean, I I know like what the things that Ryan Poole said this morning about you know they'll take a quarterback at one, and then what are you going to surround that guy with? That sounded like a wide receiver. Like when you talk about you know the infrastructure and who you're going to be putting around your quarterback, it could be a defensive end if you're looking holistically. What at about the big Joe picture, Alt? But I mean, that's another option with the offensive line. To me, I was kind of drawing the conclusion from what he said that it's an offensive lineman or it's a wide receiver. And for if Joe Wald's there, I mean, that's the question, right? Does he even get past eight? 
I mean, Atlanta's at eight, so they're probably going defense. But to get past seven, that's a that's a tough gamble that I think the Bears are going to have to take. But they're comfortable if they can trading out of nine. That's their one chance to garner more draft capital since they're not going to be doing it with the number one overall pick. And if a situation popped up, that would be one that I think Ryan Poles would be willing to entertain, you know, pretty heavily considering there's only four picks right now. And they do have, you know, by the time the whole thing would be over, they'd have 25 draft picks more or less in eight in, in three years. So that's about eight a year. And they're confident with the roster and where it stands in that regard. But they definitely wish that they had more draft capital. I can tell you that considering how this team has been built and, and how Ryan Poles views the draft as the lifeblood of his program. Courtney Cronin with us here on Cap and J Hood on ESPN 1000. I was fascinated. I would have loved to be a fly on the wall when Ryan Poles and Matty Rafluse called Justin Fields to let him know he was traded. I mean, I, I feel like it's even before the call. There had to be some knowledge from Justin Fields to know when he took his information off his Instagram, like, I'm not going to be here for a while. What, I mean, I, how do you read that? Because to me, when he took the Bears off his Instagram, I think that was the beginning of the end. I think that we can all draw that conclusion, Hoodie. But I, from my conversation, I had a one-on-one -on -one with Ryan Poles afterwards, mm -hmm. and there was that report that came out last Monday that Fields' team, you know, his agent, David Mulligetta, his people, had told the Bears, we want to go to four teams only, like trade us to one of these four teams, with the Steelers being the team. To my, from what I was told, that was not – completely accurate um it's not like they came to the bears with a list of four teams and said these are the only places we will accept a trade to you know clearly the steelers were in it from the very start they had been linked to justin fields ever since adam schefter went on the mcafee show in january and said you know about the quarterback movement this that and the other thing oh by the way mike tomlin really likes justin Fields, so that was kind of a no-brainer but it wasn't I think that that's something that needs to be cleared up, that it wasn't that Justin went in and said, hey, these are my trade demands, only trade me here, it's not going to work out well. Um, but he he clearly knew in this process, and I, I think Justin is still on a European trip, so it's not like the Steelers beat has had a chance to talk to him yet. I'll be curious about what that, what that tipping point was for him, when he knew it was truly over in Chicago, because you go back to that St. Brown Brothers podcast that he did in February, and you could just kind of sense that he was, he knew he was going to be moving on. The ambiguity of the situation, how he felt about the situation, it pointed to him knowing that his time in Chicago was up. But the Bears handled it with, you know, Kevin Warren was pretty instrumental in this trade, which should come to the surprise of nobody. I mean, he was instrumental in the Montez Sweat trade, he was instrumental. Um, in, in a lot of the conversation that went into this thing coming into play as quickly as it did, because going back to that Friday, um, and this is from some reporting that I've done throughout the last couple of last week, it wasn't like Kenny Pickett gets traded. The Bears were like, all right, time to move Justin. That came together on Saturday. The Bears and the Steelers were not in much conversation that Friday about pulling a deal off. That came together very quickly, from my understanding. And I know the conversations with Matt Eberflus and those, those two going to uh, Eberflus's house and probably putting the phone on speaker and, and talking to Justin Fields that way. And then Ryan Poles and Kevin Warren and the conversations that they had ultimately leading to the Bears clearing the deck sooner than many expected them to. All of those were part of the overall fabric of how this trade came together. But it came together far far quicker it wasn't just everybody can like point to connecting the dots it wasn't that simple uh with the way that everything kind of was a flurry on saturday before they ultimately moved him for a 2025 six in, in terms of ryan poles and hoodie played the audio earlier talking about just uh to be caleb's character and i haven't found one person that doesn't you know isn't effusive basically in their praise of him as a person and he also went on to say he never looked at his cell phone the entire time we were at dinner, which is unusual for a 22-year-old. He was engaged and he was intentional, as he called it, in his conversations. You don't go to that level unless you've basically confirmed in your mind the medicals are going to be fine, we're good, right? Shoot, I, I mean, I look at my phone. I'm 33, and I don't think I can get through a whole dinner without checking my phone or checking my watch to see what's going on. So I thought that was interesting, and they talk about – being intentional and 
the character. Remember, Ryan Poles has consistently said he wants to know the person behind the football player. And when I had a conversation with him one-on-one this morning, part of that was, how do you take criticism? So, like, one of the, one of the things they talked about with Caleb Williams in that meet, not necessarily the dinner, but, like, their meetings that they had with him at USC, two hands on the football. How do you, you know, ball security, all of those things that, you know, it's not like the guy had, you know, many interceptions, but the fumbles. How, how can you go about correcting that? And, and Poles told me he was very open and honest about it and realizing that that's something he needs to improve upon. And if you think about Fields and how Justin figured into this whole conversation, the Bears eliminated their fail-safe when they traded Justin Fields. So you know that they had to be sure that everything, character, medical, all of it, was going to check out with Caleb Williams. You know, in, in order for them to be confident in moving Justin when they did, because if they if they were if they thought something might pop up, because remember Caleb didn't give his medical at the pro day, he didn't do it at at the combine. Like he said, he was only going to visit a couple of teams. He's coming to Chicago next week, and that's where all of that will come into play. They have scouts on the road too who track those things. There was a hamstring injury, injury uh, that Poles had mentioned about with the medical that it's. You know, they, the scouts track things like that. They can, they, they have people who have eyes on these guys during the year, and that's that's like a, the most important thing that of uh, just knowing that that there wouldn't be something completely unforeseen pop up that they would be comfortable in moving forward with Caleb or with or with whoever. But we all think it's going to be Caleb Williams and moving off of Justin when they did and eliminating their backup plan more or less. Courtney, with the Bears were able to acquire some quality depth we believe, on the offensive line by getting Matt Pryor and Ryan Bates and, Al, and Coleman Shelton. Now, my depth chart is the starting center. Are, are, are the Bears set, based on your conversation with Poles, is he happy with that five? Are, are the, I guess the ultimate question, are the, were the Bears a Coleman Shelton away from having stability at the offensive line? Well, what I can tell you about that, and I know Poles said, I wrote it down in my, um, in my notes this morning, the thing that disappointed him about that position specifically was the depth and versatility you know really they just weren't cut out for that on the interior of the offensive line and that bothered him a lot he's a former offensive lineman he gets the need to be flexible at that position that's why they put so many things so many resources into trying to get Ryan Bates initially and then um, you know going out and signing Coleman Shelton to my understanding guys Shelton's not starting it's if, if the plan right now for the bears is that ryan bates who they tried to go after two years ago couldn't get him basically get him for the contract that he was signed to by buffalo and they match that offer sheet ryan bates will be the starter like going into the season now i don't know how sexy that is of a, of a headline but that's a pretty big deal when this is a you're bringing in a brand new quarterback they can't have a trial process they've got to make sure that the issues with center position that happened last year don't pop up again this year or really the last two years with Justin Fields and Lucas Patrick or Justin Fields and Cody Whitehair and the you know the rotating cast that he had to deal with so they're comfortable with Ryan Bates and Coleman Shelton having played as the starter in LA for the last couple of years is really good depth on the interior but that's a job for Ryan Bates to lose at this point. Hey, before we let you go, they took the annual coach's photo and the GM photo, and neither Poles or Eberflus were there. Why? (laughs) I wish I knew the answer to that. I'm going to guess it's because that happened yesterday, and I know that Poles was doing some media availability during the day, um, and that very well could have been overlapping when they did the coach's photo. Eberflus played golf down here, too. He's a very, very good golfer. And I would imagine that it would not probably be a preposterous uh, theory that he might have been playing golf during that. Or he might have had meetings. I mean, not everybody's hey. always in the coach's photo, but it's, uh, you know, that's what, you know, Cap, that's the first question I'm asking him tomorrow when we get to the coach's breakfast at 7.45 yeah, a.m. Thought- Why weren't you in the photo? Yeah, maybe they were out making a deal. No, I, I don't think that that's the case. I think it'd be something more benign, like somebody's in the middle of an interview or somebody's in the middle of a round of golf. Got it. That makes sense to me. And, what, right. would, and, what, would you, and what would you rather do, Courtney, in that spot? Golf, pitcher, golf. I mean, if I had a shirt as cool as Andy Reid's, I'd probably be in the picture. But, um, <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's beautiful weather down here. The, 
well, you know, they do all of the meetings and the big owner's party is tonight. So that's a, it's always a really cool time when they put that on and you get to see people in a different, in a different environment. And then tomorrow's the coach's breakfast. And we'll also hear from Kevin Warren and George McCaskey. So a lot of stadium business uh, on deck as well to talk about kind of where things are in that process as after the team has already, you know, set its sight, uh, set its sights on, on building a stadium in Chicago and, you know, lot, lots to sort through with all of that as well.